So, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my webinar. Um, I have something new for me to get across because I am a shy person. I like to stay in my comfort zone. So, I decided to do a little walkthrough of an art project I worked on. So, this is my paper. Uh, I originally just started off with a quote from Bob Ross because he, as many people know, is a fairly well-known painter. And he, I'd say he's probably my inspiration for why I started painting. And I'm not, I'm not as good as him, but uh, this quote has really helped me a lot where we don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents kind of saying everything that happens on a painting is not a mistake. It's you can fix it. You can make it look good. Which I which I really appreciate and I think has helped me a whole lot. Next I wanted to show what hope's covering. And basically I wanted to go over what materials I use, the sketching process, the stages of painting I do because it's not just laying it all out there and then the final product. The materials I use, you can see here, I'm holding a crafter's acrylic paint from Deco Art. And I just like using cheap stuff. The brushes I use are from the dollar store. The paint I use from the dollar store, the canvas I use is from the dollar store. Everything I use is basically from the dollar store. And that's something I really enjoy about art is that you don't always need the most expensive high-end things to make something you're proud of and something you enjoy. Now, the sketch process. I have used regular graphite lead, just the gray stuff. Um, I had recently gotten into using red lead and that was, that was quite difficult to hunt down and find. But um, I decided since I was going to be painting a cactus, I would use the green mud, hoping that it would be easier to cover with the acrylic. That wasn't the case, and it might have been because I'm using dollar store acrylic paint that isn't as opaque. But I think it still kind of added to it because the green undertone kind of made the other green more rich. So yeah, I think that's something um, for a big part of my art amateur career. I was just using basic pencils, but I've been really enjoying using different color leads and maybe colored pencils to sketch sometimes. So yeah, that was really fun. Next is laying down the color. Here you can see me putting the colors down. I'm using just basic colors. Something I kind of realized early on with my painting is when you focus too much detail on one aspect too early on, if the rest of it doesn't turn out that way or doesn't match, you'll kind of, you would have wasted your time on focusing on your detail there. So this way you're able to choose colors, make sure they all blend well together and coincide and all that. So you can see like the shade of gray is kind of muted, like the shade of green I had picked over here. And if I had just done all of the detail on the cactus itself right away, I may have chosen a green that was far too vibrant compared to the pot, which from the reference photo, I knew I wanted to make gray. And so I laid down a flat color of a standard color that I like, and then later on, you'll see we add details and highlights and all that. And the background. I know some people like to do all of their standard details first, but personally for me, um, since I, the green lead was still shining through quite a bit, I wanted to see if the background color would cover up the sketch lines, and it took, took a few coats, and the issue I kept bumping into was I know I didn't want a just the white background. 
but I also didn't want a colored background that was gonna take away from the cactus, which was the focal point. And so the gray background matched too much of the pot. The white background wasn't gonna cover the sketch line. So yeah, you'll see later on, I just, I did a, a gray layer and then I think I ended up going over with a white. And then I think, yeah, I ended up just going with a nice, like a mix of gray and white, but like more abstract, not just a clean, solid color. Now the highlights and shadows. You can see in the first photo here, I'm just laying down the standard little highlight pot. I liked to work on the pot before I moved on to the cactus because I knew it would be the more difficult part. Um, so yeah, and then I like to just lay lay a nice standard shadow. Oh, shadow and highlight. I like to just put it, lay it down, and then work on making it mesh well together. And you can see here, I was adding some shadow and detail to the little table it was on. And I think something really important from this is that you have to choose a focal point, like a direction that the light will be hitting. And you can see I made a bit of a mistake there. I have the highlight hitting from the right side, and then I have the shadow from the right side, which doesn't make sense the shadow is cast on the left side. But I eventually correct it. I think I just wanted to make the table a darker wash too, because it ended up more of like a gray than a brown. But yeah. Next is blending. And I wrote a little important thing because I think that um, for realism, blending is one of the most important parts. And I usually do portraits in terms of like drawing with tons of crayons and graphite and charcoal. And I tend to focus more on landscapes with paint. But either way, I think blending is very important if you're going for that realism look because on like a human, we don't just have like a harsh line. Like we don't have the highlight on our head isn't just like a white blob. No, it like, it, it creates a beautiful gradient to our natural skin color. And yeah, so I thought that it was important to note that your highlights and your your highlights and your shadows should eventually gradient into each other and blend properly. Not properly because everyone does have their own blending style. That's just how I do it. And I know there are some artists that do like the harsher line because it, it's more artistic. But my main, I suppose, section of art I like to focus on is realism. Next is the details. And I like to focus on details kind of after I've done everything with the flat colors, like I mentioned before. And you can see here that the sketch lines aren't as dramatic, I suppose, because I managed to cover it in the abstract gray white background is here and for details on the cactus it was a lot harder than I expected and this is just a small canvas I got it for maybe a dollar um, so it wasn't a lot of detail but I find sometimes the smaller the canvas is and the workspace is it's harder to do the details because you'll need a smaller brush etc and a steadier hand and this was kind of like a mix of, I wanted it to look real, but sometimes the, I didn't have the proper colors available to me. So I would try and mix and the shadows and the highlights were kind of muddled all together on the cactus itself. So it was quite difficult, but I, I think it turned out okay. It kind of turned out like realism meets like, obvious painting, which is kind of a style I like. I don't like my stuff to look too real because then it just looks like a photograph. Um, so yeah. And then next is final touches. And for this I felt like it was missing something. So I went in with my Tombow Fudineske brush pen um, and I added a little bit of an outline. I didn't want it to be too harsh and too thick of an outline and then some dots to make the cactus look more textured. And I really do think that helped. 
it like gave a bit of a cartoony look, like a pop art look, which I do enjoy. And that was the final product. It definitely wasn't what I expected, but I'm still happy with it. And I'm going to be sending this to a pen pal. So I'm quite excited to see their reaction because this is actually their tactic. And just to reiterate, my steps were sketching, laying flat color, the lights and the shadows, and then details. And I know every artist has their own thing. I don't, I don't think there's a right way to do art because everyone has their own way of doing art. And it kind of like, if it turns out with something you're happy with, that's really all that matters. Um, and next is I actually recorded myself doing this painting. And if you would be interested in seeing the full edited speed through paint of this, I have a journaling YouTube channel called Bluesology Journal, and I will link it down below when this is uploaded to YouTube. So you can definitely watch that there. It will be uploaded within the next couple of days. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you would like to contact me, that's my email, my Wix website, my YouTube, and this beautiful little doodled out presentation was from slides go and i think it definitely fit the theme so yeah thank you for watching i i hope you enjoyed that <laughs>